Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fulton Street Beats. Today we're going to dive into this Kramer. And if you guys have watched a couple past videos, you know that I'm really digging this guitar. But what makes it cool? Why does it play so good? Because this thing plays outstanding. Well, it's set up really nice. It came set up really nice. It came with really nice strings. I don't know what they are. They feel like slinkies. Um, it came with very nice frets. Very incredible fret work and a very low action. As a matter of fact, I marked the action on this. So uh, we're at, what do we have here? We had um, one millimeter at the 12th fret. And at the last fret here, we have 1.25 millimeters. And if you need that in inches, with the 12th fret, we are at uh, 0 0.040. And at the last fret, we are at 0 0.050. Yes, that is an incredibly, incredibly low action. And uh, let me get you in there. Very low action. And it is outstanding. But we're going to dive into this because I'm going to do a little, some little tricks. Um, first off, when you get one of these, any guitar, as a matter of fact, make sure you check things out. Number one, you want to check your string. This came with incredible, nice, flat uh, nickel strap washers. But always get your screwdriver on there and make sure... That it's not loose because well well this one is so just give it a snug you don't want this stuff coming up coming loose on you as you're playing with a strap one day and if it's loose it has a tendency of walking back and forth same thing with this one and uh, if you really want to get technical get up in there put a, a dab a little a dab of glue on the end uh, even just a dab of super glue to hold those in place so they don't back out on you um, would really help a lot. Now let's talk about this pickup. This pickup sounds amazing. And it looks just like a Seymour Duncan. So um, is it a Seymour Duncan? I don't know, man. It sounds like one. A lot of people said, well, the output's not there for it to be a Seymour Duncan. Well, there's a trick we're going to get in here and I'm going to show you um, to this because if it's not a Seymour Duncan, man, it does sound like one. And there's no um, harmonic feedback. There's nothing like that going on with this. What makes this guitar so great is its simplicity. So let's first, let's dive into this truss rod cover. And I have taken a couple screws off already. So um, let's dive in and check out the truss rod and see if it's all clean in there, if it's m messed up or marred up. Um, so let me get you in focus here. Let's pull this one. I've taken two out already. We're going to finish taking this one out and see what the quality is like in here because um, I always like to inspect the quality control and we got a cavity that's blacked out inside here and um, if, I, if I can get you in there, let me, uh, let me arrange myself here and see if we can see down in there for you anyhow. It's hard to see but uh, it's very clean, very nice. And um, appears to be a nicely routed cavity. And this does not need any adjustment. So the next thing we're going to do, and I've already taken the steps to take this off, is check out the back. And we'll see what we got going on in here. Now here's our cavities. They are routed out nicely. Problem. And not a problem. Some of you may like the way a Stratocaster plays. And if you do, keep your three strings on. We're not going to do that because I like a little bit more flutter in my trim system. And by the way, this is not a high-end trim. Nothing like that. But it does work well. And as you can see, we're all the way in here. So we're going to take care of that too. But first, let's, uh, let's pull the center string off or center spring off and uh, get that out of there. That's going to give us a little, little bit quicker of a flutter. And let's back these screws out a touch because... Um, I don't like it resting. And we do this evenly on each side, by the way. We don't want to bind anything, but we want more of a, a flutter when we play. So if we loosen that up and get rid of that hard backstop on there, e even just a touch. And now I can pretty much tell by even moving it with, oh yeah, we're going to have a lot more flutter and a lot less pressure on the body, um, a lot less um apt to crack the body from the pressure i'm gonna i'm gonna back it out just a touch more and relieve just a bit more pressure there we go and it's just a touch here so the system seems to work good yeah now 
Now you can see we can move that with our finger, and that's what we want. We want a fast flutter, but we also want to make sure we have tuning stability. And if you look at the bridge here, you'll see that now it's it's uh, not sitting as tightly to the body, which is fantastic. So what else are we going to do here? Well, if you look in here closely, and if I can get you in the light, you're going to see a little pill right here on this. And... Um, Man, I wish I could get you in there better. Is there any way I can get you in there? Anyhow, right there, there's a little, little itty bitty pill, little diode. And we are going to, and let me move this stuff out of the way. I'm going to try to get you down here closer so you can see exactly what's going on, what we're going to do here. So it's like a little resistor. And it is right here. It's an odd color, and the light's not in there, and I apologize for that. Maybe I can adjust some light so you can see it. Let's try this. Let's see what we got here now. There we go. You see that? I'm blocking my own light. You see that right there? That's going to come out. We're literally going to snip that out. What this does is it it um, takes up some of the energy of the of the pickup. And um, I don't know why they use it really, but all we do is we get in there and we just give it a little snip on this side. And then we can give it a little, if I can get this in here, I don't have my sharp ones, but I should be able to get it. A little snip on that side. And we can take this pill out right here. And get you in focus here again. And there it is. We just cut that out. That's all that is. And we're going to, it's going to have a lot more um, output, a lot better sound. These, this is, this was just kind of a bad idea. And it makes the switch, the, uh, the volume pot, shut off quickly instead of fading out. And I want more of a nice gradual fade. So that's why we're doing that and getting rid of that. So anyhow, routing. Very nice inside. They claim that this is um, mahogany. Um, I can't verify that because everything is, is definitely painted. Um, and it's uh, like a kind of a rough cut inside here. But it is routed out very nicely. Um, another thing we can do right here is if you notice, you get spring noise. We can put a piece of tissue or what have you in there. Sometimes I like to use pieces of, of uh, foam. So that's what I'm going to do right now is just uh, cut a piece of foam real quick. And I'm just going to do that with a razor blade. And same thing we do with the like the gems. Put a uh, put foam in the back. It keeps the the uh, vibration from coming through on recordings or anything like that. Any any uh, tonal echoes from the strings. And this razor blade's not being too nice to me right now. But we're just kind of going to cut off a piece here of foam. That is better, right there. Okay, and there we are. Now we'll put that right there, and the pressure, just that little bit of pressure right there, will keep that from um, from moving around. Okay, so let's put our screws back in. I don't think I'm going to go with gold. I I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep this guitar mostly stock. Um, it sounds so good. I I already planned on upgrading the pickup when I ordered this guitar, and, and I actually plan on putting a Floyd Rose in it. We may do a Floyd Rose sometime, but I'm definitely not going to upgrade the pickup because it sounds so damn good. Um, this neck, by the way, is by far the best neck, in my opinion, that I have ever seen as far as playability goes. It is outstanding. It simply annihilates um, Ibanez Wizard 3s, crushes them. Um, and as you guys know, I've Seen a bunch of those, played a bunch of those, built a bunch of those, as a matter of fact. And, um, yeah, this is definitely much better of a uh, playing neck. It is a slim, slim D. It is fast. The frets on this, by the way, are outstanding. I know I've mentioned that, but they're also came polished. No grit, no nothing. This car guitar was pretty much 
You can pull it out, tune it, and play it right out of the box. I It required no setup for uh, action, anything. The action is actually right to my liking, nice and low. And it is a maple neck, and it does have what some would consider a scarf joint um, way up top on the headstock. And I'll show you that here in a second. So normally, this is the opportunity I would take to shield it, too. But we're not going to because everything's working fine. If it isn't broke, I don't fix it. Um, this is the big thing that I wanted to do and take out that little diode. So let me turn this around for you here and get you under here. And you'll see, well, this is where they scarf it together. And people say it's not a scarf joint. Well, that's exactly what it is. It is a scarf joint. This is where they scarfed it together. And you can see where they did it right here on the headstock. This design is actually pretty cool, and there's not a lot of pressure on it. It makes a lot of sense. You've got a lot of material holding this from here a lot, all the way to here, holding it together. And um, I'm sure that has a lot of strength being done in that manner. Very, very cool. Let's put our other back cavity on. And we'll go over and we'll tune this back up now that we have uh, taken that spring out. And we'll see what it sounds like over here and eventually soon we will get around to uh, testing it and uh, putting, seeing how it cuts in a mix and if you guys haven't seen I put up a video of this and I didn't edit it very well I must admit but playing some kind of uh, almost like a Joe Sacchinetti in uh, so more of a rhythm not any, I'm not a lead guitarist by any means but nice little little I call it the Fulton Street Boogie um, with this guitar. And that's with its stock settings. So maybe we'll revisit that and uh, do it now with this pickup to see if it cuts through the mix better. And not that the other it sounded bad the other way, because it didn't. A lot of people would be totally, totally happy with the way that this um, is just the way just the way it is and without touching a thing me i just like to set them up for my taste and now we will uh, put it back on our truss rod cover let's get you right there and i apologize if you're out of camera sometimes sometimes i get working and i don't honestly don't um pay much attention to the camera so but today i'm kind of working around the camera a little bit so let's do this Let's get our screws in. Let me start it. Magnetic screwdrivers are a must when working on guitars. An absolute, let me get you up here a little more. A absolute must. I'm not going to tighten this yet. And if you see, if it looks like it's flex, the guitar next flexing, it's not. It's just on a moving on the foam that's underneath my foam blocks that I keep around for literally everything and I seem to be missing up oh, there it is let's say I seem to be missing some screws but apparently I am not very good holes in here and let's make sure you don't cut your string when you put these back on now we can snug them all up so yeah very impressed with the routing for the uh for the truss rod. I like to check those out. How many times have we got in there and see tons of compounds slung around or um, just very rough cut or, or even a damaged truss rod in where you can't even adjust it. This didn't have any of those issues. So we just snug that. We don't tighten anything. The only thing that needs to be a little more tight are your, like I said, your, uh, your buttons. And then we have the one on the back that I missed. I didn't miss it. I just uh, couldn't find it at the time. So, and yes, I still have all the plastic on the back. That's why that's not shiny. There we are. And these screws definitely should be upgraded to something that's a little more stout. I'll probably end up doing the gold in the back like they normally do. If I do any um, upgrades to this, and the trim works. So it's not like it's not working, not holding, not... You know, it has, 
it's got intonation really well. It's it's um it it serves its purpose, so it probably won't even be messed with right now. But what I may do is your uh, your tuners, and let me get you in on these tuners. These are just regular tuners. They do look good. They're not they don't look like garbage for sure, and the stickers are still on those, as you can see. But it is very it's a cool guitar. Um. It's my favorite playing guitar, and it's 199 bucks. And honestly, it rocks. I mean, it really, it really does. It's a, it's an outstanding playing sounding guitar. Well, there you have it. There is the Kramer Beretta Special. Um, very 80s. The color is just a magnificent in real life. There's zero blemishes on this guitar, by the way. There's no scratches. There's no dimples in the paint. Nothing. Outstanding. Same with the fretboard. It's got some figuring in it. Um, my favorite part of this guitar is the, the playability, the neck. It is just outstanding. Best neck I've ever played, period. Best. The best. At least it suits my hands the best. I love it, and it's fast as hell. Okay, let's get over, plug this thing in, and check it out and see if it sounds any better. Stay right there. Mm -hmm. 